got my cologne. Tss, tss, tss. You know how that works. Just, you know, I got, I'm feeling good that night. Huh? I, I spooned between these two Australian men who know each other. She took it and she looked at me and she went in to give me a kiss and I fucking bolted. <laughs> I just, I panicked. I, I, I don't know what the hell to do with that. And like Leah pushing me against the brick pillar and going, who is it? Who's your girlfriend? <laughs> And I was like, it's you, okay? <laughs> Imagine if Scarface wasn't about a drug dealer, but it was about a surgeon. That was my dad, right? He'd be like, say hello to my little friend. Scapel. Night, night gowns. What do you call those? Night, whatever they are. Evening gowns, thank you. And they are gorgeous. And I am a super friendly guy. And like, I barely like my tongue in my own mouth. Why do I want to put it in somebody else's mouth? Sometimes they have a partner and the partner comes in and chops their head off. And that's what this breakup was like. Great. Hey, our next storyteller, the first time he ever told a story at Madison Story Slam, it was at one of our events that we did at Rubinia Courtyard. And it was outdoors and it was beautiful. And he came up and just told this really funny story, but also pretty poignant and um, very well told. Every story that he has ever told here at this stage leaves me thinking two things. I want to hear more stories from him, and I would like him to be my grandfather. <laughs> because he has the most grandfatherly voice you have ever heard. And sometimes... He sings at the beginning of his stories, and it's just like, yes. <laughs> Telling a story called Those Who Can't Teach, please put your hands together for Charles Payne. <laughs> oh, where, oh, where would my mama be? The Lord took her away from me. She's gone to heaven, so I've got to be good. So I can see my mama when I leave this world. On the first day of school, students are so shocked to see me. They're like, whoa, you're black? You're from Detroit, Michigan? And you teach science? But I was shocked that I learned that Arizona teachers had extra duties on top of their low pay. My extra duty was walking the students home after school every day. And I didn't mind it. I'm from Michigan. I love the Arizona heat. Also, I live close to the school, and it was a lot better than kindergarten duty. Imagine waiting for kindergartners to get the bus. No fun. I love that. I love doing the walking home until one day. I found a young student, my student, Jesus, screaming on his front porch. There was a note on his door that said, they took your mom. So what did I do? I followed procedure and called for help and watched the social worker take Jesus away. The memory of him is still etched in my mind at our Day of the Dead celebration placing a black and white photo of his mother on our holiday display table because he would never know if his mom was alive or dead. This is what happens when you, when you deport women to Mexico. Women wind up dead. The haunting of, the, of a Zeus and his mom turned into post-traumatic stress. So I did what teachers do. I took a class. I took a class of Mariana Ortega and learned about her research from collecting items like wallets and condoms from corpses decaying at the Arizona border because she said by identifying these women, she could end generational trauma. That class made me question everything that I was trying to do. I just kept thinking about those condoms. Were they used? Who takes condoms in the Arizona 
in the Arizona desert where it's hotter than an oven. Where's Ortega keeping these condoms? And would I have the confidence to bag these condoms like a rape kit? That thought sent me down an emotional roller coaster. And I realized that my goals of being a teacher of the year candidate meant nothing because I could not protect Jesus from losing his mother. Now, when I moved to Madison for the first time, I didn't land the teaching job that I interviewed for. So I left public education and moved on to corporate America. And I'm so proud to hold such a prestigious role Making more money feels like I'm turning my life around. But all that was short-lived because black and brown kids are still being harassed by ICE. Now, I'm failing at my job. I feel like I'm too much person and not enough product. My colleagues don't talk about these issues. They make them feel like they don't matter. I feel invisible to them as if I don't matter. Every day, I walk past more Black Lives Matter stickers than I see black people in my office. I wonder why they have to ask me every day. Was that article on 365 um, Madison right? Like is Madison one of the most segregated cities in the world? And I ask them to look around, because it is. But the worst part of all of this is, I turned on the news and almost had an emotional breakdown because I saw ICE officers running across the screen like that social worker who took a child. I began screaming at the TV because I could not believe that these unfair deportations that followed me here to this stolen land built on the mounds of our First Nation elders. I still think about Jesus to this day. I sometimes hope that some of the women that Ortega is trying to identify at the border by testing condoms, condoms stained red by the blood of mothers, condoms used to rape mothers, condoms used to sexually assault mothers, I hope that one of those condoms identify Jesus' mom. No, I hope that one of those condoms don't identify Jesus' mom. I just hope Jesus was able to find her way back to her son. Now, I realize this is why I tell stories to this day. I am hoping that I can change some hearts so maybe that you all will do something about this. Because I gun it. And those who can't teach Oh, where, oh, where could my mama be? The Lord took her away from me. She's gone to heaven, so I got to be good. So I can see my mama when I leave this world. Thank you, Charles. That was beautiful, man.